Okay. Okay. There we go. I think we're on. Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. I'm Darcy. I am the creator of the Vibrant Woman program. I'm also a founding member of MAF Method Certified Health Coaches and Practitioners. I'm here today with my friend and fisherman, Josh. Um, he is going to teach us from Wild Alaskan Seafood. He's going to teach us all about um, safe and humane meat and why it's so important. And before I actually turn it over with a bunch of questions, uh, we have so much to learn from him today. Um, I really just want to give a quick background because I've known Josh for a very long time and he is a part of my own family's healing journey. So I'm going to roll back. Gosh, Josh, I really don't want to count the years because that, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's I've, been a while. It's been a while. So I met Josh in the aisle of our local health food store because I was there on a mission. I was a mother on a mission. My daughter was brain injured as a baby. I spent years doing this intense uh, rehabilitation program that helped her outgrow her learning disabilities to become an independent, successful college student. Like she's out there studying nutrition science mm -hmm. today and chemistry. Um, but the point is she went through... Um, a period where she was having a lot of seizures because of that brain injury. And I had learned that a lot of that had to do with hormones and the brain. And so I became desperate for finding sources of meat that were not going to be contaminated with all kinds of um, byproducts of hormones and antibiotics, because Josh is going to explain in a minute, that's, that's all on our meat. So I met him in a local um, health food store in the aisle. I was like, I need clean. He's like, I've got gotcha. you. <laughs> I order all this stuff here. And let me tell you. So um, he was a little bit of a soulmate match then. And over the years, I know your journey has taken you into other professional roles. Um, but his hands actually sometimes catch the fish that I eat. And so Josh is a really important resource for my family still. And I want to share him with you because I feel like if we're going to choose to eat meat, and some of us don't, and I understand that. I'm not here to convince anyone that they have to eat meat, but I do. I don't tolerate plant proteins at all. And so meat is an important part of my family's nutritional needs. And I realized that if I'm going to eat meat, I'm not oblivious to the fact that um, in our modern mainstream capitalist culture, where profits, right? Trump, you know, humanity, kindness, you know, any, so that I can't be a part of that system. Um, my daughter, when she was younger, when she realized kind of the connection, she picked up the two chicken drumsticks, Josh, and she went, mommy, you mean like walk, 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 you know, and she chicken, chicken. And I was like, and I knew that day, like we kind of just dumped that. And I, I knew then I was going to have to reckon this, my nutritional needs with my values and my morals. And um, you helped me to do that. And I'm so thankful. And so um, thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So I'll just, um, you know, just a little bit of my background. As Darcy said, I uh, worked at the uh, local Blooming Foods, the, the co-op here in Bloomington, and I was their meat and seafood manager for uh, many years. I won't date myself how many years I worked there, but um, I got to learn this industry firsthand. Uh, I was with, I, I was the buyer. Uh, I talked to the producers. Uh, I saw how our, um, you know, the, the, the United States, the way the food industry is kind of set up, and Darcy mentioned this a little bit, uh, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of misdirection. There's a lot of misrepresentation. There is um, just everything is based on, as she said, it's unfortunately the bottom line. Uh, they're not concerned necessarily about quality. They're more about quantity. It's more about how much money I can make off of this product. So I saw really quickly how you know if and, and it only takes a few steps. It really does. It's actually very simple. Uh, but you can really source your proteins direct as, as direct as possible. That's, that is the absolute best way you're going to find clean, uh, you know, uh, you know, meat that is going to help your body rather than hurt. And there's so much 
misdirection out there, it's, it's easy to get kind of sideways and, and led off into another direction. So, you know, if you do your due diligence and it, again, it's very simple, um, just a little bit of homework, a little, a few questions, uh, just as Darcy did when she came into the store and I first met her, that's really all you have to do. And once you get those answers that you're looking for, you found it, you found a good spot. And you're able to kind of like, okay, I can trust this. I know where it's coming from. Uh, I know what it's going, you know, all the good protein, all the good nutrients that the, that these meats are going to give uh, to me rather than eating all of this high polysaturated fat meats and just stuff that is not good for you. Uh, it's cer it certainly tastes good, but you know, I'm with Darcy. I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, less than that even, and, and, Trust me, there's really good tasting quality meat out there. In fact, I think it's way better yeah. uh, than what you're normally going to get in your big box stores and things like that. So anyway, backing up just a little bit, I was the meat and seafood manager for about, you know, 10, 11 years. Uh, I actually, uh, I work now for a company called Wild Alaska Salmon and Seafood. We sell 100% wild caught Alaskan salmon and seafood that we catch and we process. It's direct from the fishermen. So as with all protein sources, the more direct you can get it, the better you are. Uh, usually the more middlemen there are, there's more hands on it. There goes the price that increases. And, you know, you just, the fewer the hands that, that handle it, the better you are. That's going to be true for every single protein source. That's true for vegetables. That's true for almost any food source that we get here in the country. Um, so I started with this company uh, in 2014. I'm now their sales and operations manager. I do a bunch of um, farmer's markets where I see Darcy uh, every time I'm in Bloomington, which is so great. Uh, and um, yeah, so I've been doing that for a few years now and I was able to get a chance to go to Alaska a couple of seasons and fish with Captain Tony, he's my boss. And he's the captain of the boat, uh, him and his wife, Heather, they own the company, very small company. By the way, that's my dog in the background. Um, I have three of them. So you'll probably see them coming in and out. They're going to make some noise, possibly, hopefully not. Anyway, um, I, uh, yeah, so I started fishing with them in 2009 and they hired me on in 2014 to kind of run all their day-to-day -day operations. So I do, uh, I have learned almost everything there is to know about the seafood industry. Uh, and like I said before, there is just so much misdirection and so much misrepresentation. And that's all based on the bottom line. It's all based on, you know, these companies trying to, you know, make as much money as they can. And that's fine. You know, everybody's got to make a buck and pay their bills and, and do that. But not at the expense of um, our food source. I think it's extremely important. Uh, what we put in our bodies is, is, is who we are. And that's, uh, it's gonna make or break us really. So the more, you're, the more you, you, know, you eat really good sourced healthy foods, the better you're gonna be. Your overall mental health, physical health, I mean, everything about it, it's gonna affect it <clears throat> as Darcy can attest to. So, um, yeah, it's been a whirlwind of a, a bit of a career. I live in Bloomington, Indiana. You would never think that somebody uh, is a, what you know, a fisherman works for an Alaskan commercial fishing company uh, who lives in Indiana. But here I am. Uh, I don't know anybody else who's had the career path that I have. <laughs> it's been a it's been a crazy ride, but it's been very very educational and very um, beneficial for me and my family and the people that I've met here in town and, and really everywhere that I go and talk to about it. I, I love that you say, um, yeah, that you're the, the fisherman from Bloomington, Indiana, yeah. well, because, well, because we are in the middle of a, a huge continent and it's almost impossible to get good, fresh seafood here, except you bring it in flash frozen. Um, I love how this has given you just such a unique life path too, because one of the things that I realized is that to, in order to be really healthy, um, I had to step kind of out of the mainstream and into the margins um, where we're forced to be a little bit more creative. So I love that you've made this whole thing, just your creative life. Yeah, correct. And, and it's, you know, there, there was, you know, some, some, 
you know, I made some choices and, and kind of like steered it towards that way. But a lot of it did happen, you know, just within, I was in the right place at the right yeah. time. And I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I have met some amazing people along the way. Um, and it's just been, it's been great. I, I am a healthier person because of it. My family is healthier because of it. Uh, and I, I can't say enough about it. It's just absolutely wonderful. Can we talk a little bit about your seafood then? I want to talk about when you go. So when you go to fish um, and you catch that seafood, I want you to talk to us about this word sustainable that's on every package. Because one yep. of the myths that I think we need to bust is like that labels, um, the labeling, all yes. natural, yep. sustainable. Absolutely. Like, these are keywords and they're trigger words for a lot of people who want to do better, but they may or may not mean anything. I'm going to let you tell us. Yeah. And, and then I want you to talk a little bit about why it has to be wild caught if you really, really want to do right by your health and what's up with farmed salmon. What's the difference? Yeah. Uh, all great questions. Yeah. And, you know, they are, it's absolutely probably the biggest part of what we do. You mentioned, you know, it's, and I did too, you mentioned, it, I'm, I'm here in Indiana, landlocked Indiana. You wouldn't think about, you know, having this kind of resource in the state of Indiana or even in the Midwest. That's one of the main reasons why Heather and Tony, the owners of the company, they chose to do what they did because it's such a rare resource here. You can't really find good quality seafood, 100% wild caught, direct from the fishermen. It just doesn't, it didn't exist before they started doing that. You know, you were buying uh, a little tray of, of salmon in Kroger and you know it might have said wild caught uh who knows if it was you know a lot of it is shipped to other countries China and and, the, and Asian countries to be processed and then shipped back over to the U.S. uh stamped product of U.S. on it and mm -hmm. sold as is there I mean there's just so much of that going on so you know that's a big reason why this company is where we are doing what we're doing here rather than the west coast or uh even the east coast you know there's a lot of uh there's a lot of good seafood coming out of the out of the out of the eastern seaboard but it's not alaskan and it's and it's not and then it's salmon it's definitely not wild caught unfortunately atlantic salmon has been overfished extremely over overfished there's only about less than one percent of the salmon coming out of the atlantic ocean is actually wild caught Wow. which is a very sad thing. Uh, and, you know, that's just without those regulations, and I'm going to talk about sustainability, that's what that, that's where that all comes into. Without those regulations, we just, you know, as humans, we, we consume and consume and consume and, and we overfish. It's just a part of who we are, unfortunately. Um, but that's where Alaskan and Pacific salmon is different. Uh, in fact, Alaska when they became a state of the union, they actually wrote sustainability into their constitution. So it's a part of their whole political system. It's a huge part of their economy. So they wanted to be sure uh, that this resource, this precious natural resource was not overfished uh, and that they saw returns coming back year after year after year and larger and larger and larger. And we've seen that for probably four to five decades. And that's wow. been, that's been happening. I mean, wow. it's, it's just, it's one of the, the only places in the world that, you know, you can really say, yep, this is absolutely sustainable. These guys are, uh, let me just, yeah, let me talk about sustainability a little bit. So Please. this, the, uh, the state of Alaska, all the fishing is run by their department of fishing game. And so they actually have people and there's many regions in Alaska. Alaska is a huge state, as you already know. So there are many regions in Alaska where uh, these fish are caught. They, they, the salmon swim all over the state. It's a Pacific fish. Uh, it, it can be really caught anywhere. And what they're doing, this, this, uh, the life cycle of a, of a salmon is usually about four to six years. This is sockeye salmon I'm talking about. That's what we target. That's what we fish for. Uh, that's what we sell the most of. So it spends, it's about four to six years of life, of its life cycle. Uh, most of that is spent in the ocean, but when they are spawned and then when they go back to spawn, it is fresh water. So they're, and they're returning to the exact, I mean, it's crazy, almost the exact same spot where that fish was spawned 
they go back and they, you know, the females lay their eggs, wow. the, the males, uh, you know, they, they spawn and they, and they, they germinate. And it's, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Mother nature is crazy. She, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. So, um, the state of Alaska created this in their constitution that, you know, all of these fisheries, all of these commercial fisheries and all of these subsistence fishing, this is, these are native Alaskans who are fishing for their families. Uh, it's all got to be sustainable. So they have guys and men and women sitting there on the, uh, the, literally on the banks of the river, counting these fish with little counters. They sit there and they count these fish going by. And that's called the escapement number. So the escapement number is how many fish are getting upstream to spawn. And once they see the correct numbers of escapement happening, then they open it up to the fishing. So you are not even allowed to put a, a net in the water. You can't put a, a hook in the water, nothing, until, the, until they see these, these numbers reach to the point. And that's, that's so these fish get upstream, they spawn, then the next year they've got, and it keeps, it's just this big cycle. So every year we see returns greater and greater than what we've seen in the, in the previous years. So um, it's not overfished. You're getting a healthy population they're feeding on their natural, uh, the feed that they're, that they're supposed to feed on. Um, it, this is salmon as mother nature intended. We've been eating this, humans have been eating this kind of salmon for thousands and thousands of years. So it's, it's the way it's done. And it, I'm so happy to be a part of it because it's, um, it's unlike, and like I said, it's unlike any other fishery in the world. It's absolutely amazing. As you say that, I'm picturing, you know, the salmon in that cold water, and I'm picturing all, all the, like, the beautiful fats, and then I'm picturing those fats for my daughter's brain, right? Absolutely. And, and mine, and yeah. Absolutely. That, so, and that's where that all of that comes from. So all these fats Darcy's talking about, these are the omega-3s. These are, you know, they help with brain health, skin heart health, they reduce the risk of stroke. I mean, you name it, there are so many health benefits. And the thing about the omega-3s is it's not something that our bodies naturally produce. We cannot get this from any other place except our diet. So it's important that, you know, you are choosing something um, as, as good and as quality as an Alaskan wild-caught salmon, because that's where all these good omega-3s are. And it's, it's it, pound for pound, it's the best protein source you can eat. So what is their natural, when you say their natural diet, because then I, in my mind too, I can picture the little fish farms and yeah. all the, the overcrowded yep. pools and the, can you? Yeah. And I'll talk so, about that a little bit too. Uh, yeah. A natural fish, a wild caught fish, what they're eating on and, and specifically sockeye. Sockeye is actually, it's considered kind of the vegetarian of the, of the salmon species. There's five total salmon species in Alaska. Sockeye usually feeds on a, a little krill and a red algae, which is where they get their really deep red color. Mm. Uh, if, if you know anything about sockeye, it's got that super rich, deep red color. Most other salmon, and, and this includes the other four species of Alaska, it's that typical pale pink. Um, color can actually rank, uh, vary quite extensively, even within the same species. That's just dependent upon the individual fish's diet. So you, you know, you get with a sockeye, you get a really clean um, uh, food source that they're eating. And because they're not eating other fish, like smaller fish, they're really not ingesting that toxin level. So you're getting very low levels of mercury, other toxicities, you know, that are ever present in our oceans. It's, right. it's, you can't, you can't get away from it. But what you can do is choose a fish that, um, you know, does eat something other than other than other fish, which is what a sockeye salmon does. So it's like, if you're going to eat salmon, that's my favorite. It's yeah. absolutely, as far as health benefits go, hands down the best you can eat. Gotcha. I never realized that's why the color, there's just something about yeah. the color though. Like color is really, I use color a lot when I'm choosing foods. Um, yep. and I'm going to teach the women in my vibrant woman course coming up in January, how to do this too, like how we can tune into our intuition and the things that look the most beautiful and vibrant and colorful to us. Like that's actually a message that that's telling us that's a nutrient dense food. There's something Absolutely. in there that we need, right? Yep. It's never true. Realized that about true in fruits and vegetables. It's also true in salmon. No question about it. That's that vibrant red color. And it's, again, it's all coming from that individual fish's diet. 
So again, it can vary a little bit, but you're always going to get this like really nice red, you know, full of nutrient meat. It's absolutely delicious. Love, well, I've, love, love it. I've also noticed too, like when I buy the fish from you, it always has a stronger color than the stuff I see in a grocery store. Yep. Now, is that because it's a different species or is that the farm difference? It's possible. Yeah, that's possible. If, if they're, if the store bought salmon is a truly wild caught, that's definitely what's going on. It's, it's a species related, uh, color difference, you know, farm salmon. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, that's one of the main differences between wild caught and farm is the, is what these fish are, are eating. And like I said, a wild caught salmon, it's feeding on anything that it would normally feed on in, in its natural environment, exactly what it's been doing for thousands of years. Uh, a farm raised salmon, unfortunately they are, you know, they're in open and, and there's called open ocean farming. So there's these big, circular nets. Uh, you might have seen the documentary on Netflix. You'll um, see Spiracy, I think is what it's called. Watch it. It's, it's, it's devastating. It's heartbreaking, but it's very educational. And it's not actually talking. It's talking more about the farmed salmon and the farming industry with salmon and fish. And what they're doing is they're feeding these fish uh, color agents. Mm -hmm. They're feeding this fish uh, all these antibiotics, uh, all of these, uh, you know, things that, you know, a, a salmon is just not going to feed on in its natural environment. And the coloring agents are because, you know, they're not feeding on their natural food source. And so these, in, in a farm situation, these salmon are pale white. They are stark white. There's no color whatsoever. So their color comes from an added ingredient in their food. And it's, you know, yellow number five or whatever they're putting in there, you know, to make it that color, to make it appeasing in the store. You know, it, it's got that normal salmon pale pinkish color to it, uh, but it's not natural at all, uh, completely unnatural. So the other main difference between a farm salmon and a wild salmon is, you know, like I mentioned, the omega-3s, you're getting a very high level of omega-3, a very low level of the saturated fats that you don't really want, the bad fats. Farm salmon is almost the exact opposite. You're getting a very low level of omega-3s and you're getting a very high level of the, of the bad fats. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, the ratio is, it's almost a mirror of, of a wild, of a wild salmon. Um, and it's, unfortunate, it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. Uh, and of course, in, like I said, in the, in the Atlantic, it's, that's all you're going to find. If you go into a restaurant and they're serving Atlantic salmon, I can guarantee you that it's a farm raised salmon. Yeah. But cheaper for who and for how long? You yeah. Know? Great, great question. Exactly. Yeah. In the long run, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it costs us all. Yeah. I do get this though a lot when I'm coaching um, people about nutrition. Um, I do hear a lot. I get some pushback sometimes about, well, it's too expensive. And I just want to address that for a minute. Actually, it, in, again, for who and for how long, uh, it's not necessarily more expensive. I mean, you know, I, I made this work as a single mother raising a kid on, on welfare subsidy programs, like because I was only going to buy real food. Yep. Um, and, you know, you just, and so I gave up buying some other things. I had to really focus on where we're going to get our nutrition. What's the most nutrient dense foods? What are the highest quality foods? And I, I wasn't buying anything outside of that. But also, I think if you really look at the cost long run, it's, you know, what we purchase from you and what's available in a grocery store is not different. Absolutely. And, so, you know, my wife and I made a very conscious decision very early on that if we were going to, you know, spend our money on something and, you know, you know, Obviously, it, 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 even if it costs a little bit more, we're much more apt to buy, to spend that money on good quality food than, you know, we go, you know, I don't know, go out to eat one night or sure. we do this or do that. We're so much more eager to spend our money on good quality food because we know, well, that's going to come back to us. You know, it's not going to be. Yeah. Sorry about him. It's not going to be, um, you know, this thing where you spend this money and you don't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you really do get the benefits out of it. And it's in the long run, mm -hmm. longevity, lifespan, health, uh, lower risk of cancer, lower risk of heart disease. All of these things make a difference in the end. Yeah. 
lower healthcare costs, lower, over the, lower over the counter medications to deal Absolutely. with the symptoms that you have from another junk. And yeah. Yep. And I've just decided, you know, I don't need another pair of shoes. I, you know, that, that's my food money. Right. So it's an investment, honest to God, it feels like, like a really sound investment. That's um, exactly what it is. It's a, yeah. it's a sound investment. Well put. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is so fascinating. I didn't realize that about the Atlantic salmon. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty much all over the place. I'll, I'll go to, I mean, I can't tell you the last time I actually ordered salmon in a restaurant. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and that's just cause I know I'm, I'm educated about it, but um, most of the time that you see, you know, even fine dining restaurants, um, mm -hmm. you know, these guys are uh, again, it's more about quantity rather than quality. And unfortunately, you're going to see a lot of Atlantic salmon in restaurants and stores and things like that. So if we do want to avoid that, what if, if, we, if not everybody can order directly from you, although we're going to put the links here, this will go out on YouTube and social media. And we're going to make sure folks know where to find you and your products and Fantastic. Fi find me and the course that I'm teaching to help people with this. Some folks really need some handholding through this. Yep. It is a big change. But yep. um, what are the questions you recommend we ask then? Yeah. So that's the main thing. Ask questions, uh -huh. you know, wherever you're going, you know, don't, don't be afraid to ask questions. And, and I always say, you know, if uh, you know, your fishmonger at the store, if he, if he can't answer these questions, you're better off probably trying to find it elsewhere. Um, you know, where's the fish caught? How is the fish caught? Is it wild caught? Uh, you know, do you, do you have a, do you have a location where this fish was, what came from? Um, if it's Pacific, you're in, you're in the right area. You're okay. definitely in the right area. Uh, even you know, Alaska, of course, too. North, Northwest Pacific. Absolutely. A little bit of a different uh, quantity wise, but not, not much. Like if you're over there, you're good. Uh, you're, you're at least in the right direction. And there's not to say that there's not farmed operations in the Pacific. There definitely is. Um, but it's far, far, far less, far less. Mm. So your chances of finding good quality salmon, if it's Pacific, uh, is very good. So those are, those are the main questions. Um, you know, how is this caught? Who caught it? You know, if, if they can answer, tell them, you know, it's like, oh, these guys, I know this family, they caught it. Uh, you know, it, it was, you know, processed the same day they caught it. Then you're really in the right direction. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I know we were in good hands um, with you and what you're doing. And you t you taught us this back when we were looking at, you know, all other kinds of meat, you know, yep. um, hoofed meat. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute, too. I'd like yeah. to. But the idea that um, it needs to be like frozen right away um, and and then just distributed from there. In other words, what you were saying a few minutes ago, like the supply chain doesn't need to take this fish caught here in this place in the world and shipped all the way to, to China to be That's processed correct. and then yep. shipped all the way back. Right. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So there, yeah. And there's a lot of that going on, uh, you know, and it, it's, it's a labor cost, you know, it's, it's much cheaper to get it processed there and, and to have, then have it shipped back, which is kind of mind blowing to me. Uh, just with fuel costs and all of these, you know, especially now with the pandemic, all these supply chain issues just doesn't ring true for me. Uh, well, it doesn't ring true for me anyway, because I know what I'm eating is direct. I mean, I know the guy, I, I literally know the guy who caught this fish, you know, so it, it's, um, yeah, there's just a ton of that. There's a, there's so much of that going on. So the more direct it is, and I said this a thousand times, but the more direct it is, and this is true for all proteins, mm -hmm. you know, you go to a farmer's market and they've yep. got beef vendors and pork vendors. When you know who's raising this, the, you know, this product and this animal and treating this animal in the right, proper way, you know, really also, uh, you know, the, the, the environmental husbandry is a big deal. You want to make sure that you're treating the environment that you're you get, that you're getting this product from in the right way. So that's there's no <laughs> so yeah, it's very important. It's just an important part of, of the whole process. Yeah, and for me too, it's about money. Um, you know, when I when I buy stuff in a big box store, and I'm not saying 
we don't all have to go into the Kroger from time to time, right? I just, I'm inviting people to really reimagine this because, um, what, you know, if I pay whatever it is, $10 for that fish, you know, how does that get siphoned off and who gets yeah. the bulk of it? You know, when I buy fish from you and I give you that money, like how many other fingers are going to, right? So yeah. I know I'm supporting, and the same thing when I buy my beef and my pork and my eggs directly from a farmer, yep. like I am not paying the middleman. Um, That's right. You know, I'm not paying for all of the funny labels on the cart. Yep. You know, it's a recycled carton. Um, I have less waste, you know, That's when right. I prepare that food. And I feel like I'm voting with my dollars. Like, I feel like yep. I'm passing on, re you know, they're giving me a resource and I'm giving them a resource. And it's like this really, um, this really soulful value for value exchange. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you do have that. I say this constantly at, at the markets, you know, you're, you do have power in your dollar, your, your dollar stands for something. So where you choose to, you know, spend your hard earned money, um, you know, you want to make sure that that's, you know, going to the right people. You, it's not going to these big corporations that don't need it. You know, it, frankly, you know, these are, you know, the farmers and fishermen and the people that we're talking about, these are people who are invested in what they're doing. Absolutely invested, 100%. They do it because they care. Uh, they, they're not necessarily trying to make, you know, a, a million dollars off of this business. They're doing it because, you know, they see a need and they're trying to fill that need. And that's that's important to me. I, that's, I know that's important to you, Darcy. So it's it's a really it's a good thing to think about when you're, when you're buying food and when you're, when you're choosing what foods to buy. Yeah, it is too. I think about, so if we could just like talk about the beef farmers, I know that's not your gig, but you, you're familiar with that whole yeah. part of the industry too. Oh, yeah. So I think about how they have to invest in that land and that land often gets passed down generation to generation. Yep. Um, it's getting us closer to social justice issues. Although I will just add a note. I mean, we clearly need to begin moving more of our dollars to farmers of color. We need to, you know, yep. help to redistribute that land back where it should have been. Yep, but the agreed. point is like, if we can, um, if we can get that stuff from people who, like you said, are taking good care of the land and the animals with these conscious practices. You want to talk a little bit about regenerative farming, why that matters? Yeah. So, I mean, these are, uh, as you said, these are people who we, we're talking, you know, three, four, sometimes five generations of family farming, uh, you know, and this is what they do. This is all they know. And again, they're not out there to try and, and make this huge profit. Yeah. They, you know, they're going to live off of it. And they're going to run their farm, and, and and that's that's a whole part of it. But when you when you remain local in your in your choices uh, to with what you eat, you help maintain that. You help maintain the integrity of of the of what you're getting. Um, there's a lot, you know. I mentioned all the stuff in the seafood industry. It, it absolutely happens with every other protein source in this country, hands down, no question about it. I mean, look at all the, the feedlot farms, these right. big corporate feedlot. I mean, we're talking, it's just, it's horrible. It's, it's heartbreaking to see what's going on. Uh, and, and we're, you know, like I said, you have the power in your dollar to make those changes. So when you choose to, to spend local, it's so much better for your environment, your community, and the people who, you know, you value as your friends and family. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that, that I, even that word feedlot, right? And so the point is, a lot of people are aware now, we, it used to be kind of invisible. Nobody was really aware of the cruelty right. that's right. going on in that industry. And right. The, it was kept cruelty. under kept behind very, very thick curtains for a long, long time. And now that we know, and this, I know that's been the inspiration for a lot of people that I know yep. that have given up meat. And when my daughter Haley learned more about it, we kind of looked at each other like, all right, hold on a minute. Like now for me, um, like I said, I, you know, my need for animal proteins and, um, but here's the thing I knew I was going to have to reckon that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to participate in animal cruelty. I'm not going to subsidize that. Correct. How am I going to make sure I get animal protein? And for me, it was a lot of soul searching too. It's, it's looking at this idea that, okay, first of all, being part of the food chain to me is not a problem. So I don't feel bad for eating meat because, 
okay, the animals are going to die. Well, they're going to die anyway. So for me, what's more important than that animal die to be nourishment for something, it's going to be nourishment for the soil or for the, for the bacteria that, you know, so they're going to die. My concern is how do they live and how am I contributing to that quality of life? And is there respect and humane practice in there? Um, And then the processing, right? So, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into that too, how cleanliness, how cleanly yeah. the, the meat is, you know, how, and it, it's all about quickness. It, it's about fast, humane, mm-hmm. uh, you know, th- those are, they're very important parts of the process. And, and, you know, one little mistake, you know, you could do everything right. And one little mistake on, on the processing side and it, you know, it contaminates, mm. uh, it can be bad. So you got to, there's a lot that goes into, you know, the, the, the side that most people don't see. What gives me hope is that, you know, we are, as a society, we are becoming more educated about our food. It's slowly, it's slowly, but it's surely, we absolutely are. I mean, 20 years ago, people weren't talking about, Mm -hmm. um, you know, these kinds of things, not in the way that we talk about it today. So it's, it's becoming much more, um, in front of us, it's becoming much more a part of our our social construct and our conversation that we have with people about food. And I I think for me that gives me hope um, that we are headed in the right direction. Albeit it's it's very slow. It's a slow process, um, but I'd rather have it slow than not at all. Yeah. Um, you know that that's just how I feel. Um, it gives me it it, it 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 allows me to look at our food industry in a in a bit of a more positive way. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so those small local processors are just um, far more humane. And again, it keeps some money local Yep. and um, they're happy to talk. So I don't know about you, how much you mingle around at the farmer's market. My favorite thing is to talk to the farmers. They're delighted to, to talk about it's their the animals and their practices, yes. their fields, what they're doing, what else they're growing. Um, well, right? and that's, and that speaks true. I mean, when you talk to them and they have these kind of, you have these, those kind of conversations, you can just hear in their voice, how passionate they are about what they do. So, and that makes me want to be like, yeah, I want to, I want to get in on that. Like I, here's whatever I need for, you know, two pounds of your ground beef, you know, like that absolutely seals the deal for me. Cause you know, when you're passionate about something, you know, these guys are doing it right. That's right. You know? Yeah. I just want to put one more little nugget in here too, is that for a lot of folks, they've given up meat because, um, because we, we had the idea about it around that, you know, the CO2 emissions are from meat and actually the regenerative farming methods, which have been, those are ancient practices that have been abandoned for feedlots that we're returning to actually have the power to pull a lot of that carbon out of the atmosphere. It might just be the way we save the climate change issue, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, slowly, but surely, but it's all, it's absolutely headed in the right direction, you know, and if it's not, it's certainly you know, it's one of these things where it's going to, it's going to morph and we're going to, we're going to change with what we need to change with. And, and, you know, it just, it gives me hope. Yeah, me too. Well, this was fun. So I yeah. guess we, we have a couple recommendations for all of you out there, right? Which is ask questions, try to get to know your farmer or your fisherman, do your best to stay local, right? What else Absolutely. am I missing? Am I missing anything? The more educated you can be about what you're putting in your body, the better. So whatever that means for you, it, you know, whatever questions you have, um, you know, there is no wrong question to ask when you're, when it comes to what you're buying for your family and yourself, as far as your, your food consumption, there is no such thing as a bad question. Yeah. Yeah. And for women too, I work with a lot of women who are actually struggling with hormones and hormone balance. I want to say you know, this is a really important change because you're not going to have all those added um, hormones and antibiotics that are going to come in and, and mess up your balance there too. So if you want to feel better, this is the way to go. Great. I mean, Absolutely and just, agree. just look at how healthy and vibrant and energetic Josh and I are. <laughs> <laughs> so. I do eat this fish a lot. I, I mean, my wife and I probably eat it. Well, it, you know, on a good week, two, two times a week, easy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, thank you, Josh, for your time. And thanks everybody for watching. We're going to put some important links below and um, yeah, we can't wait to see y'all around. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you.